Now at 530, as the temperatures get colder on this first alert severe weather day, warming centers are heating up across the bluegrass. We'll tell you where to find them. Also on WKYT this morning, Lexington firefighters urging people to be more careful when using those space heaters. We'll have more on how to stay safe while trying to keep warm. And no doubt you'll need some kind of heat the next 48 hours. We have a wind chill advisory in effect for every single person watching this morning, now through Thursday uh, morning. So we'll go over the latest forecast, show you these numbers because they really get low. That's coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT and welcome aboard. It's good to have you with us. A cold start to the day. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Welcome in. And as we have said, today is a first alert severe weather day because, of course, it is cold thanks to these frigidly cold temperatures across the Commonwealth. It's already affecting some schools, right. actually. We have word that Morgan County and Elliott County schools are canceling classes today. Perry County will operate on a one hour delay, hoping things warm up a little bit. Here's WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris with the latest on this huge chill down. Hey, Micah, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. It only gets colder from here on out. We started off when I walked in at about three degrees there in Covington. Now we're below zero, and we were right there around nine, 10 degrees there in Lexington. Now, this is your wind chill. This is not your temperature, nonetheless. This is how it feels outside. So, you guys in the southern zones in the teens, it only gets worse from here on out. We already hit our high this morning, so temperatures will continue to dive. Not only that, we have to deal with snow showers. Now, look, this isn't heavy snow, but no doubt about it, it is just enough to cause some issues there on the roadways, and we'll be watching that throughout the morning hours, taking a break, then we'll do it this afternoon again. 13 degrees. As we make our way into the afternoon. Now, it's overnight and into tomorrow morning that it really gets brutal. I have no doubt about it. You'll see cancellations, delays. We'll go over the latest forecast with that data coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll stay on top of it. Thank you. As the temperatures plummet across the bluegrass, organizations in several counties are trying to keep those who are less fortunate safe from the cold. Shelters and warming centers will be open in Lexington and in many other cities who are now responding to the situation. WKYT's Mark Barber live now from the Salvation Army on West Main to tell us more. And Mark, I know it is just a challenge uh, for you out there this morning uh, doing these Good reports. morning, Bill and Rebecca. Many, many of these shelters are filling up because it is so bitterly cold out here. In fact, here at the Salvation Army on West Main Street, there are even people sleeping inside the lobby here. So that gives you an idea of how many people are trying to escape these dangerously cold temperatures. Now, in all, there are eight emergency shelters and warming centers open across this city. Now, because the city's emergency weather plan has been activated, many of of these shelters are offering extended hours, and Lextran is offering free rides to shelters for people without transportation. Now, because of the extreme cold, again, many of these shelters are filling up very quickly. The Hope Center on West Loudon says they are already housing about 200 men, but they say they're making room for 50 more. And even if they fill up, they tell us they will make sure everyone who comes to them finds a place to stay. So, when the numbers do get too big for this facility, uh, we do call our community partners and we will take some of the guys over to the other facilities. Now, if you need immediate cold weather help, the United Way of the Bluegrass says you can call their call center 211. Now, if you're looking for a full list of where you can find those shelters and how to contact them, visit our website, WKYT.com. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, doctors say it does not take too long for bitterly cold temperatures like we are seeing to become downright dangerous. They tell us anyone who has to be outside for long periods of time should be careful. Our very own meteorologist, Jim Caldwell, live from the Weather Garden with some precautions we should all be taking. Are you taking those, Jim? <laughs> It is certainly a cold, cold morning here in Lexington. And when we were out here a little earlier, too, we were seeing some of the snowflakes really starting to fly in. But now that has started to calm down, at least for the moment. There's plenty more action showing up on Defender, as Mike has already shown you. And we'll probably see some more snow showers trying to blast through this area. But the area wide story over the next couple of days will certainly be the extreme cold that we'll all be dealing with uh, throughout central and eastern parts of Kentucky as well, as we likely see those single digit lows, maybe even some sub zero actual air temperatures in some spots, and of course the wind chill. That's going to be the big issue. And if you have to be exposed to this cold for an extended period of time, doctors say that anyone that has had a, 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 a lot of caffeine or alcohol, that can run into some issues for you as getting putting the cold and those two together. That can be a deadly exposure combination.
Every year we get at least a couple of people that have passed out outside in the freezing weather and end up oftentimes with severe hypothermia and even bad frostbite. And as we stand out here, and I just said, hey, it's not snowing anymore, a few flakes are starting to fly here again in uh, the Lexington area. Of course, it might be a little different on the other side of town as well, but we've got plenty of cold to go as temperatures drop all day long. So prepare for even worse as you get ready out there this morning. I'll have uh, much more from outside coming up for you as the morning wears on. I'm meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Jim, thank you. And new this morning, a woman had to be treated for smoke inhalation after a heater inside her Lexington home all of a sudden started smoking. When the temperatures drop, firefighters say they see more and more heater related fires. WKMT's Whitney Wetzel, the live desk now with more on how we can all stay safe using these. Good morning, everyone. The two people who lived there woke up to the smell of smoke, but they were able to get water and put out the flames themselves. This happened at a home on Elm Tree Lane. The fire broke out in the bathroom there where a space heater was running. Other than that room, the two can still stay in the home. A woman was treated on scene for smoke inhalation, but other than that, everyone, including a cat, is okay. More people will likely be using space heaters with such cold temperatures this week, so firefighters are reminding people how to safely use them. They they also recommend checking your smoke detectors monthly to make sure they work. In this case, firefighters say the couple did have working smoke detectors, but they gave them a new one just in case. Uh, with heating devices that we're not normally using the rest of the year. And uh, another lesson learned on this one, we're going to set him up with a smoke detector for his house. Uh, they didn't have a, sm a working smoke detector. Thankfully, in this case, they were able to wake up on the, uh, on the smell of the smoke. But, you can't depend on that. Now another good piece of advice, firefighters recommend not running space heaters when you're not at home or asleep. Using them might save money month to month, but firefighters say it's not worth the cost of your home or your life. At the live desk, Whitney Watzel, back to you. As the Arctic blast moves through the bluegrass, stay tuned uh, with WKYT for continuing coverage. Over on WKYT.com, you will find the latest forecast along with any closings, delays, and cold weather information. And remember, for future snowfall, we would like you to help us track snow totals this winter. Send us your eyewitness pictures using the hashtag WKYTRulesWinter. 538 is our time on WKYT this morning. Other news now. Lexington police tell us they are investigating after a man showed up at a gas station with a gunshot wound. A man was shot in the leg and then drove himself to the Speedway parking lot across from UK Hospital. That's where police met up with him just before 10 o'clock last night. The man was then taken over to the hospital. His injuries are non-life threatening. Police say they're still trying to figure out where the shooting happened. Well, a fire forced a Franklin or Frankfurt family from its home last night. It started around 7 along Bronner Street. The fire was mostly in the attic, but much of the home has water damage. Firefighters say the family escaped safely. No one was injured. They're not sure exactly what caused this. The Red Cross helped the family to find a place to stay for the night. Good news on a Franklin County Golden Alert that we first told you about last night on our news. The Franklin County Sheriff says 68-year-old Robert Miller has been found and is safe. Investigators say Miller disappeared Monday morning from his home on Willowcrest Drive, but deputies say he was later seen at a Taco Bell in Frankfort with a younger man. We now know the name of the victim of a deadly crash in Powell County. State police say 27-year-old John Martin died yesterday afternoon when his car ran off the road and hit a tree. The crash happened on Hardwick's Creek Road in Clay City. A passenger, 39-year-old Patricia Adams, was airlifted to UK Hospital. She's in serious condition this morning. Police are not sure what caused the crash. New this morning, Kentucky State Troopers have arrested two men in connection with a bank robbery in Hardin County. The robbery happened at the West Point Bank in Glendale back on December 23rd. Police released these surveillance pictures of the robbery, and police say they have now arrested Leonard Sisk of Cecilia and Justin Collins of Litchfield for the crime. They're both charged with first-degree robbery and lodged in the Hardin County Detention Center. Well, we have some new information this morning on a deadly shooting in a veterans medical clinic in Texas. It happened yesterday afternoon in El Paso. Authorities say that a man shot and killed a doctor, then shot and killed himself. They say that at this point, they are not sure what led to the shooting, but that the surrounding community was not in danger. A man is facing charges after police say he led them on a chase in Laurel County. London police arrested Timothy Harrison of Berea. They say an officer tried to stop Harrison for speeding on Main Street, but he kept on going, drove through some barricades, and eventually hit a guardrail. 
Police arrested Harrison after he jumped out of the car and tried to run off. He's now charged with DUI speeding and fleeing or evading police. It appears the fight against heroin will be a big issue during this year's legislative session. That session began in Frankfurt yesterday. Lawmakers will consider at least 10 bills that focus on heroin abuse and treatment. Governor Steve Beshear and Attorney General Jack Conway have announced a pilot program that will make heroin overdose kits available to some Kentucky hospitals. Those kits include Narcan, which many doctors say can help save lives after a heroin overdose. UK Hospital, U of L Hospital, and St. Elizabeth Hospital in Northern Kentucky are all part of the program. A new angle to the controversy surrounding e cigarettes. According to some Central Kentucky authorities, teenagers are now using the cigarettes to disguise drugs. While a typical electronic cigarette contains water vapor, flavoring, and nicotine, some teens are packing them with heroin and marijuana. The new trend is called waxing. Police officers say it started on the West Coast but is now popping up in Kentucky. They take marijuana and take the THC out of it, put it in the wax form, you stick it in the e cigarette, it heats it up, melts it, you smoke it just like an e cigarette, but you get the high off of it from marijuana. Police say they first confiscated one of the e cigarettes at Carroll County High School and they later found out of an ongoing problem in Trimble County. Police are urging parents to keep an eye on their kids with this.